Hey there, Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com. Here to talk to you today about the Conklin Duragraph. This is a very exciting pen for me because it's a really affordable pen, one of those great value pens. Um, it's made by Conklin, which is a company that has been around for a very long time, 1898 is when they were established. Um, and they came out with the model originally called the Duragraph in 1923. Now Conklin actually kind of disappeared for a while. The company went under and blah, blah, blah. They've recently been revived as a brand from Yaffa, who is a company out in California. They're the ones that make Monteverde as well. They also distribute Stipula Delta and uh, yeah, Monteverde. So um, they kind of recently revived it, and I really like what they're doing. They're coming out with some lower price options for the Conklin models. You may have seen my video that I have on the All American, and the Duragraph here is an even more affordable option than that. So that's part of what's so exciting about this pen is phenomenal value that you're getting in a cast resin acrylic for only $44. It's a list price of 55, so you may see it priced around that for most places, but at Goulet we have it for 44 with a converter. It's really a phenomenal option. Um, it's a great pen because it's professional looking, but it's not gaudy. So it's it's it looks really kind of classy and really stands out, but it's not suit not too flashy. So I really kind of like it for that. Really solid writer, solid performer. The Conklin box is pretty large in size, honestly. Um, this is the same box you'll see whichever Conklin you buy. So they have a standard box across all their models. Um, but it's got, it's a dark blue box. It's kind of this like faux leather type material. It's just cardboard sleeve, but it, it feels nice. It doesn't feel like cardboard. It's got this nice kind of texture. It's got this gold kind of embossing on here. Really nice. Um, and then you slide it out of here and there, there'll be a couple of cards in here as well. Um, one of them is an instruction card that tells you how to fill the pen and whatnot. Um, and the other one is this card that kind of explains a little bit about their collector's club and their um, limited lifetime warranty that you can get through Yaffa. And then the box itself, you open it up and it's got this engraving, uh, not engraving, pfft, embossing here on the inside, Conklin brand, and it has a pen kind of resting in here. Um, I think it kind of looks like a coffin, but you know, it's a nice looking coffin, so. <laughs> That's weird, I don't know. Um, it comes with a couple of cartridges, um, a blue and black short standard international cartridge and a little package there. Um, and then the pen itself, whichever color option you buy, it will come in there and it comes with, um, you know, it's the fountain pen and then it also comes with a um, threaded converter as well, which is really kind of cool because a pen in this range, it kind of could go either way, but I really dig that it comes with a converter. There are three color options for the Duragraph. There's amber, cracked ice and forest green. And these are all cast resin acrylics, which means they're not just injection molded into some machine to have just kind of a flat look to them. They have a, they're cast into a sheet and then turned uh, on a lathe. So what that does is that enables them to get much more depth, much more chatoyance, shine, um, and really kind of cool color and pattern effects that you can't get in injection molded. Typically you would see this on much more expensive pens. I really don't know how they're doing it around this price, but it looks pretty darn good for what it is. The amber is kind of this flame orange pattern that has these striations that go through it. This is the most translucent of all the colors, so you can kind of see what's going on inside there. You can actually see the converter a little bit, um, and this one really kind of stands out the most out of the three. The cracked ice is a nice white with a hint of yellow to it. It's got kind of gray and black undertones as well. Kind of a mother of pearl look to it a little bit when it catches the light right. Forest green is a flecked material. It's a dark green. Um, green pens are, you know, kind of hit or miss, but I think this one is pretty classy looking. This is a pretty medium of the road pen as far as the weight goes. It's 26 grams, so it's not super light, not super heavy. It's really kind of a good all around. And the size is really nice too. Um, I have really big hands, and for me, this pen is, is really good. It's in a really good spot. It's not... Um, a pen that I feel like is only for people with big hands or small hands. I think it kind of straddles that line where it could really work nicely for kind of everybody. Um, and it, because it's postable, you know, it's a screw cap um, push to post on the back. It's a little bit back heavy when it's posted. Uh, part of that's just because the pen is so long and there's a little bit of weight in the cap. So, you know, if you don't like the back weightedness, you could always just write with it not posted. You know, the pen is very kind of, um, it's long enough where even with larger hands like mine, it's comfortable even when you're holding it uh, unposted. 
And as far as the grip goes, I like the threads and the step right here. It's not a really harsh step. Um, it's a very small step. That's part of what you get when you have um, kind of a different um, height here, or different uh, diameter, I guess, with the cap and the body. When the body's a little thinner, you don't have to have a step that's quite as big as you would as if you were trying to make the body as thick as the cap. So that's really nice. So the threads are really subtle. Um, and with me, my thumb sits right on those threads, but it's still very comfortable. It's not obtrusive to my writing at all. Um, even though that step and the threads right there. So it's very comfortable. Um, I think it would be for, for anybody, just about anybody with any size hand. It has some nice embellishments with the engraving. It has the Conklin logo engraved on the center band, um, and then it has Duragraph engraved on the back of the center band. It's very subtle though. You almost have to kind of know to look for it. Um, and then on the cap on the finial, it has Conklin established 1898. Um, that one's a little more prominent, but um, you know it's it's kind of fitting. The whole pen is really kind of going for more of that vintage look, that whole flat top looking thing. Um, it's nice. The clip is fairly tight. That's probably one thing if you plan on using this on your shirt pocket or whatever. Um, the clip is kind of tight, so it's just something to kind of be aware of. I never clip my pen, so it's really not a big deal for me. But if you do, uh, you know, you might struggle just a little bit more with this one than you would with some other pens. So let's talk about some comparable pens to the Duragraph. Um, there's a bunch of good ones, um, especially from Monteverde, because you know Jaffa has both Conklin on and Monteverde, so I think they have some um, kind of similar things going on. Um, one pen that I've got here, I've got the Cracked Ice Duragraph next to the Monteverde Intima. Um, similar kind of size, and maybe not quite as long, but um, the diameter is going to be fairly similar, and it's even got kind of a similar look with the whole black grip and uh, the black finial there on the end, so very comparable, uh, close in size, close in price too. The Intima is uh, $50. And then looking at the Prima, that's another pen. I'll go ahead and grab the other uh, amber Duragraph for this one. So very similar in color even. The amber is a little more of an orange, a little brighter kind of red or orange um, than the, the Prima. But again, similar kind of thing. It's got a different um, you know, trim ring and stuff like that. The shape of the grip is different, but it's going to use the same size nib. I don't know who supplies their nibs, but I imagine it might actually be the same supplier given that it's all going kind of through the same company. Um, this one um, is going to be pretty comparable and it's close in price too at $50 as well. And then if you like the material of this one, um, the material is very similar to the Edison Collier and Antique Marble. Um, now, they're two completely different companies, Edison and uh, Conklin, but uh, you know, I don't know if it's the exact same supplier they have, but it seems to be pretty similar. So you know, if you like the Collier, but it's a little big and you wanted something a little bit thinner, the Duragraph would probably be a good option. It's also less expensive. You know, um, the, this is made in America. It's actually kind of ironically, even though Conklin was originally made in Toledo, Ohio, now they're made overseas uh, in Asia and they're assembled and packaged in the US, uh, but Edison is actually made in Ohio, in Milan, Ohio by uh, Edison Pen Company. Uh, and then the last one I have, I'm gonna break out the forest green one. We actually here at Goulet did a winter premiere um, with this um, uh, green that, um, you know, it's funny because we didn't know anything about the Duragraph when we picked the color for this green. And then when the Duragraph came out, we were like, oh my gosh, this is such a similar color. I don't know. Um, it's a little bit yellower in color. And this pen is, um, as of the shooting of this video, this pen is almost completely gone anyway. Um, but if you missed your opportunity to get your green winter premiere, you can still get something similar in the forest green Duragraph. Now let's talk about the nibs for the Duragraph. It's a little bit confusing, okay, because initially when they did the release of this pen, they ran out of fine nibs. This would have been in December of 2014. So the option was either don't have any fine nibs for the holiday season, or they had black fine nibs. So they offered, hey, we could put a black one on here, it matches the grip and all that stuff. Do you guys want to do that? And then we could have pens. And we said, well, Black fine nibs are better than no fine nibs, so that's what we did. So it was a little confusing because at the launch of the pen, the black nibs were fine, the medium nibs were two-tone, and then the stub nibs were all single polished steel tone. So 
It was a little bit confusing. It's a little less confusing now because the black nib thing is done. So you shouldn't really see any black nibs out there anymore. You may have originally bought one for the first month or so that they were released. But as of the shooting of this video moving forward, it should be where all of the fine and medium are the two-tone. So it's a polished stainless steel with a gold Conklin logo in the middle there with a crescent breather hole. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, but the stub nibs are not two-tone, they are single-tone, and they have a round breather hole instead of that crescent one. Performs the same, writes the same and everything, it's just a little bit of an aesthetic difference. And if you turn the pen over on its side, you can see the engraving over here on the side of the nib, so you know which nib size you're dealing with. So the pen's available in fine, medium, and a 1.1 millimeter stub. They are smooth with a little bit of feedback. The um, stub nib is actually probably the smoothest of the bunch. The fine and the medium have a little bit more feedback to them. Not scratchy necessarily, but you definitely kind of feel, sort of like when you're writing with a graphite pencil, you get some uh, kind of resistance on the page, which a lot of people like. So, you know, they can be smooth a little bit, especially you hit a little bit of mylar paper, it'll kind of smooth that right out. But that's how they come, is with a little bit of feedback on it. They write fairly wet, especially the stub nib. That one really writes wet. So it's got a good flow to it in whatever size you're using. And I've actually found that the medium is a little bit stub-like, just a little bit. I would not call it a stub, but it's not perfectly round. You get a little tiny bit of variation on the cross stroke and down stroke. The nibs are number six size, which can be swapped out with other nibs. Um, and especially, I wouldn't normally even like try and push this too much because generally speaking, when you start mixing and matching nib brands with pen brands and stuff like that, you're like getting outside of warranty coverage and stuff like that. You know, obviously Conklin's not gonna warranty the use of some other brand's nibs. Um, but because it is a number six, it's kind of a more universal size. I'll go ahead and point it out. Um, so you can actually remove it. It definitely helps if you have something like a Goulet grip or some other gripping material because these nibs are in here pretty good. Um, there's a couple of different things that you can do. If you want to buy a whole nib unit, um, you can uh, get nib units in some places, like Edison has some nib units. Um, and actually, I haven't even tried that to see if that will fit. Let's give it a shot kind of going off script here, but I'm really curious to see if this works. So I have an Edison nib here, and I'm seeing if the threads on the housing are the same as the Conklin, and we'll find out right now, live as I'm shooting this. It actually looks to be a different thread. So the housing on the Edison nib unit will not work on the Conklin. Glad we know that now. So you're not gonna wanna swap out the whole nib housing, but it's very similar kind of setup where you can have the nib in the feed, you can pull them out, that's why it's good to have something like a Goulet grip because you want to get a good grip on this thing because it can be kind of tough to pull it out. So you want to grip it and then kind of rock it back and forth just a little bit. And when it starts to come, it's kind of reposition. Let's pull it kind of slowly. You can see it coming out there. There we go. So the nib and the feed are kind of in two separate pieces like that. So if you wanted to swap out the nib, especially like a Goulet number no. six nib, those will all work. And the nice thing about those is you can go with an extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 or 1.5 millimeter stub. So the extra fine, the broad, and the 1.5 would be something that you can't get through Conklin. That would be a nice little addition. You could keep the separate nib and kind of swap them out as you please. When you go to put them back in, it kind of has to fit in this certain way. You can see there's a kind of a shape here that it has to fit. You kind of hold the nib and feed together like so. Insert that in there gently and then press it down in. Make sure it's all aligned properly, and you're all set. So this is a cartridge converter pen, which means you can use cartridges or a converter. It's a standard international, which is one of the more common sizes out there for cartridges and converters, so that's kind of nice. Um, and it comes with a threaded converter, which I really like because I may or may not have been emotionally scarred from previous experiences of trying to fill my pen and having the nib section actually drop off the converter and falling into my ink bottle, and then you have to fish it out with your fingers, and your fingers get all inky, and everybody asks you what happened, because if it's a red ink, it looks like you cut yourself or whatever. <sighs> anyway. It happens to the best of us, okay? But anyway, you're not gonna have that happen with a threaded converter because it's gonna grab onto the back of the grip and you cannot get this thing off of there. So it just makes it nice and easy so when you're filling it, you can hold onto the converter and know that that grip is gonna stay in place. So that's kinda cool. Um, you see that on the Mont Monteverde pens too. That must be a Yaffa thing. They have influence on that. But if you don't like to use a converter for some reason, if you want the convenience of a cartridge, you can do that as well. It comes with a couple of cartridges. Um, the standard international short is what you're gonna wanna use. It just sticks right on there and then you just press it in place, pops that cartridge open, and then you have ink and you're good to go. 
Um, however, um, there is a standard international long cartridge option, which I initially thought like, sure, you know what, because most every pen that can fit a converter, you could fit a standard international long because it's about the same length. However, once I actually went to go and put it in there, I noticed that for whatever reason, the end of this cartridge ends up kind of sticking into the back finial of the pen. And yes, it might be long enough to accommodate it, but then it's gonna get stuck and you're not gonna be able to get it out if you push it all the way up in there. So for that reason, I would probably recommend that you don't use standard international long cartridges, stick to the shorties. And the last thing I wanna cover about this pen is that you cannot use it as an eyedropper convertible pen. I know it's really tempting, especially on the orange, the amber one, because it's kind of translucent. And it would be so cool if you could see in there, but the problem is two reasons. One is the metal threads on the back of the grip of the pen with prolonged ink exposure, that's gonna corrode and cause you some problems, and that's not ideal. And the other one is that you have this finial here, which is a separate piece from the rest of it, and it's gonna be glued in there, but it might not be watertight, so you may have some leakage and stuff that would come out of the back. So all around, it's just a bad idea. No eyedropper conversion on this pen. All right, so I'm gonna ink up the Duragraph. Very straightforward, I've got a bottle of ink here. Noodler's Black is my go-to, because I put it in the nib nook, and this is kind of like my testing inks for the first time, or testing pens for the first time kind of ink. Um, so the, Pretty straightforward, if you're using the cartridge, you just pop it in there, but if you're using the converter, you gotta unscrew the you know, working part of the pen outside of the pen body. Unscrew your ink. You wanna make sure that you have a paper towel or something like it handy. Um, and then you wanna take your converter and you wanna push the piston so that it's all the way down. And then you wanna insert the, the pen up into the bottle until the ink is all the way up onto the grip section. So you really wanna get it in there pretty well. And the first time you go to fill it, it's gonna have a good air bubble in there because this pen's never been filled before. You can see there how much of an air bubble I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna expel it back into the bottle and then just do it again. You wanna go pretty slow pace. You don't need to go super, super slow. But, um, and then you can see there I've got a much smaller air bubble. I could do this one or two more times and kind of work at it. But um, you know, for, this, for the purposes of what I'm going for now, this is pretty full enough for me. And then all you gotta do is wipe off the grip of the pen with paper towel or napkin or whatever you have handy. Maybe you have a terry cloth towel or something you like to use for this purpose. And then just screw the pen body back on and it's all inked up and ready to write. All right, I've inked up actually all three nib sizes of the Duragraph. This is kind of a special treat for you here. So I'm gonna start out with the fine nib and you can tell which nib size it is by looking over at the the nib thing over here. Got them all inked up with Noodler's Black. And you know, one of the things about these is you're gonna get nib creep. It just seems to kind of happen on here. It's, it's part of this pen I'm just noticing is it's like, as I'm trying to wipe it off, it just kind of keeps coming. So that's something you're just gonna kind of have to embrace with this pen. Um, it's a very wet writing pen. This is the fine nib and it's actually very, very smooth. Um, I'm really kind of digging it. It's actually a little bit smoother than the medium even. I don't know if that's how they all are or if it's just this particular one but it's very um, good. So let's see here, Conklin. Duragraph. Fine. It's definitely keeping up flow wise. And this pen's actually been out for, you know, a couple of months at this point and feedback's been pretty good overall on how these write too. So um, that's, that's really kind of cool. Um, next one I'm gonna use is the medium nib. I have in the cracked ice right here. Yep, that's a medium. So let's see here, I'll just kind of make sure it's flowing. Yeah, this one, it feels, it's got a little more feedback to it um, than the fine nib did. Um, it's not bad though, it's not a, not a huge difference, but um, let's see here, Conklin, Duragraph, medium. It's a little bit darker, a little bit thicker line. And you can see here, I mentioned that um, it was a little more stub-like and you can definitely kind of see that a little bit, especially if I'm doing downstrokes like this, and then if I'm doing cross strokes. It's just, it's very slight, but there is a little bit of a difference there. It's just, um, you know, something that I thought I should mention. And then the last one I have here is the stub, 1.1 millimeter. This one is really wet. And I like this one because it's kind of like fake calligraphy. You know what I mean? It, uh, it looks like you've spent more time 
writing with it than you have, but it's really just the nib itself that's causing it to write a little different. And here, when I do the X's, that's where you can really see the difference between the downstroke and the cross stroke. You get a lot of variation there. Um, same thing with the figure eights. You can really tell a difference. Now the dry time is going to be a little bit longer with this pen, with the 1.1, because it is putting down so much more ink, so that's something to be aware of. But all around, I'm very pleased with how Durograph writes. I think Conklin's done a great job um, with these pens. So that's my video on the Conklin Durograph. Try to be pretty thorough, but if you have any other questions, feel free to ask on YouTube or on the blog. I'm happy to answer whatever I can. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want more like it, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want more details and specifications, pictures and stuff like that, go check it out on gouletpens.com. And you can also buy it there too, if you really want. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching and ride on.